Hello. Welcome to another edition of Capra Comparison Picks. I'm Ranch. Today I will be giving you the Capra Comparison Picks for some more prelim fights for UFC 269. Be sure to check out the video I did yesterday of the early prelims. Um, and I'm going right up the card with the next three fights in line. I, I'm guessing the order hasn't changed, so I'm going to follow the order that's on Tapology and continue. And uh, so we're looking at the next fight is the flyweight fight between Alex Perez and Matt Schnell. Danger Schnell. Okay, P perfect. Let's go. We've got... Um, let me get the marker here. We got Alex Perez, the huge favorite, three to one favorite, minus three ten favorite. Twenty record of twenty four and six. He's coming off a loss to Davison Figueroa. Got guillotined in round one, but Davison Figueroa, you know, awesome. He's an awesome flyweight. Um, Alex Perez is three and two in his last five. And he has a four and a half inch reach advantage. He's fighting out of Team Oyama. That is the Hawaiian team. There's uh, other notable fighters out of there. Who fought out of there? That was their last. Um, fought last week out of there. Well, oh, Maki Patolo, but uh, unfortunately Maki lost. But anyway, you know, Team Oyama, not a bad place to. There's other fighters. Uh, I think. I want to say like uh, maybe Marlon Vera, a couple other guys. I didn't write them down, but they're, it's, a, it's a pretty decent place for Alex Perez. Alex Perez, slightly younger than Matt Schnell. He's 29. Matt Schnell's 31. Okay. Matt Schnell, plus 260 underdog. He's got a record of 15 and 6. So both these guys have the same amount of losses, but Alex Perez obviously has... Uh, nine more victories. Now, um, Matt Schnell's also coming over, coming off a loss to Rogerio Bontorin. Unanimous decision. He also is three and two in his last five. Despite having a four and a half inch reach deficit, he does have a two inch height advantage, but he is also training out of American Top Team, Coconut Creek, Florida, ATT for Matt Schnell. I don't understand, really understand why he's such a huge underdog, but um, there must be some reasons behind it. Uh, I think Daddy, Alex... Yep. Yeah, I, I want to say Alex Perez does have the advantage pretty much where it goes, but, you know, Matt Schnell, well-rounded, and... Uh, Let's just, let's see what the cappers have to say in regards to this one. But realize a lot of these cappers I noticed today, I'll get into it more when we get to this fight, but a lot of these cappers uh, I do let the bookie odds um, influence their decisions, which um, I, I'm not gonna lie, I also do if I'm on the line, I, and the, but it makes me look into it more, like why is this guy stronger? But anyway, um, taking Alex Perez, the three to one favorite, we have the MMA fortune teller. The teller out of uh, Florida, right down the street from Coconut Creek, right down the street from American Top Team. He's taking Alex Perez. We've got um, Layton from UFC Gambling Addicts. Now here's the good thing with Layton. Layton doesn't look at the odds. He tries to guess them as he's doing the uh, breakdown. So you can't say he's uh, biased depending on the bookie odds. He tries to guess the odds, then he looks them up as he's doing his breakdowns. Interesting enough, he's still taking Perez. Um, it's your boy. Ebay's. Correct, Ebay's. Also taking Alex Perez, and he's saying by decision for Perez. Then we have King of Crackdowns, 5095. I'm sorry, I don't know what that number is. I'm gonna have to ask him what that, what's the deal with that. But he's taking Perez, TKO in round 
three against Matt Schnell. Matt Schnell, I guess, finds ways to lose, but they both have the same amount of losses. The thing is, Perez has nine more fight, nine more victories. That's, I think, that's swaying also to that. And plus, the strength of schedule. I mean, it's way better to get a loss to Davidson Figueredo than it is to get a loss to Rogerio Bontorin. Um, finally, to close us all out, only one of the Perfect Parlay Pursuit. Perfect Parlay Pursuit, Alex, the younger brother of Luke, is taking Alex Perez. Dan, um, Dan has a pick on this fight, but he had to leave... And they go backwards down the card. And Dan had to leave after giving that pick on the Muniz Anders fight. But they did have a special guest this week on their show, a guy named um, Tovan Anthony, who seemed to know his stuff. He's a the links will be in the description, guys. Check the perfect parlay pursuit on out. They have a link to Tovan Anthony's channel. He does have a YouTube channel. He's new to me, to be honest with you, and I didn't really check him out, but I am planning, after I'm done with this video, I'm going to check him out a little bit more. But um, both Tovan Anthony and Luke from Perfect Parlay Pursuit are taking Matt Schnell for the contrarian pick. What's his name? Tovan. Tovan. Tovan and Luke representing PPP. Both those guys take a match now. That's pretty much, uh, they're taking them because of the value, underdog value. They, they're saying this as a much closer fight than the odds have it, which I like that. But um, I'm going to go with the experience and the more well-roundedness of Alex Perez. I think he should be able to get it done. I don't think he should be a three to one favorite here, but uh, I do think he should walk away with the victory. If I found a real good argument for Matt Danger Schnell, I would lean that way because I want that plus 260. But I have to take Alexander per Alex Perez and I think he'd probably get it done by decision over Matt Schnell. Moving on. Now this fight, this fight, moving on, moving on. This fight between these beautiful young fighters, we've got uh, Aaron Blanchfield. She's coming in as, Tapology has it wrong. Tapology had her listed as a minus 140 favorite, and they had Miranda Maverick listed as the plus 115 underdog. That was on Tapology. I think they had it backwards. They had it mixed up backwards because if you look up the lines on Bet Online, this is legit. Blanchfield, 7 and 1 as a professional, plus 118. These are straight off, hot off the press as of this afternoon. Miranda Maverick, 9 and 3, minus 138. So I think Tapology had it listed wrong, and that's why I'm saying. Some, I, as you watch uh, Perfect Parlay Pursuit, they were influenced by these lines. You can, when he read it off, like uh, Luke's, Luke said, oh, Aaron Blanchfield is the favorite, and rightfully so. I think she should be, and that's why I'm taking her. But uh, actually, not. Nah, Tapology effed up, so keep that in mind. Anyway, um, let's talk about the true favorite here in Miranda Maverick. P. Diz, big fan of Miranda Maverick. Met her before because he's from Virginia, as she is. And uh, I guess, I don't know if he's ever rolled with her, but he has visited the gym that she goes to. She fights out of the House of Muay Thai in Norfolk, Virginia. And um, she's the slightly older. She's 24. I don't have room to write it, but Blanchfield, 22. So both very young girls coming into this thing. Um, Miranda Maverick is coming off a split decision loss to Macy Barber, which I had her pick to win that. And she, sh I mean, I'm not gonna call it a robbery because it was split decision. So, you know, it could have went either way, but I think Miranda Maverick should have got the nod there. But uh, you, I do see faults. She did 
kind of gas in the third round. That's when she, if anything, should have picked it up and put an exclamation point on her uh, her fight in the third round. When you know it's close, you got to dump everything you have into that third round, like go for the gusto. Unless you're unless you think you got two rounds in the back pocket, then you can you can play the chase game. You play the cat and mouse, but. She wasn't there because Macy Barber obviously won split decision. So obviously some of the judges had, you know, Barber winning those first two rounds. Anyway, Fear the Miranda Maverick is four and one in her last five. Um, and she is taking on the plus money underdog in Aaron Blanchfield. Tapology does not have Aaron Blanchfield's facil training facility listed. All they say is she's fighting out of New York. I know she's fighting out of some place and it's something like New Muay Thai something. I saw it like on Instagram, you can see a little snippets of her training and in the background. And there, there's like a, uh, on the wall, there's a big logo and it said New Muay Thai, but I only got glimpses of it because it's only like, you know, on, on Instagram, it's only little snippets. So, and it's, they didn't focus on the logo. They just focused on her working out and stuff. So. And I, I know Erin Blanchfield, I think she's like family orientated. I think I think her dad is like also her coach. I could be wrong with that. I could be thinking of Aspen Ladd, which I don't know. I get Erin Blanchfield and Aspen Ladd, I get them too confused, but Erin Blanchfield, uh, fighting out of New York, she's coming off a win against Sarah Alpar, lackluster sale Alpar, neither Alpar. Alpar is no longer in the UFC. Erin Blanchfield four and one in her last five. Her one loss was to a Tracy Cortez and that was split decision. That was in Invicta. But um, I did find a, and Erin Blanchfield does have a height and reach advantage. Well, it's slight, she only got a one inch height and two and a half inch reach advantage. But here's the thing, I was looking through both these uh, young women I, look, I was looking through their uh, resumes, their fighters that they've fought, and they do have a common opponent in Brogan Walker Sanchez, the fighter, Invicta fighter out of Guam. Brogan Walker Sanchez, pretty decent fighter for Invicta, never been to the UFC, but she's seven and two, and she's only lost twice. She's lost once to Aaron Blanchfield and once to Pearl Gonzalez. So she's, She's a pretty game fighter, and she beat Miranda Maverick. She beat her in 2018 by unanimous decision. She lost to Aaron Blanchfield by uh, unanimous decision in 2020. So if you do want to play MMA math, Aaron Blanchfield has that victory over a common opponent, which Miranda Maverick had lost. And Miranda Maverick here, this is a very close close fight, closer than you would, you would think. And... Um, that's why you know Tapology had this had the stats the the odds wrong they had them flip flop because they, obviously they messed up somehow because all the books have uh, Miranda Maverick as a slight favorite going into this Blanchfield's slight underdog. <coughs> Let's see what the cappers have to say in this interesting fight between Aaron Blanchfield and Miranda, the fear the Maverick. Aaron Blanchfield, cold blooded. That's her nickname, cold blooded. You like that, Nor? What are you shrugging your shoulders? Eh, it's all right. I think it's a pretty good nickname, cold blooded. But anyway. Frogs are cold blooded. What's that? Frogs are cold blooded. Frogs are cold blooded. All reptiles are. Aaron Blanchfield, 22 years. Let's no. We're gonna start with the true favorite in Miranda Maverick. Fear the Miranda Maverick. We've got. It's your boy. Ebays. Ebays. He's on the side of Miranda Maverick here. Then we've got um, Layton from UFC Gambling Addicts. Also taking the rugged fear of the Miranda Maverick bite. Even he said this is kind of a even fight, Colt. It's a, there's an argument for both sides here. Because uh, Blanchfield, she can strike. Miranda Maverick, she can strike. They can both wrestle. They both have Miranda Maverick, uh, House of Muay Thai, but she does have uh, some wrestling. I think she has some sort of wrestling credentials. I, I'm not sure if they're 
in uh, high school or college or something, but I think she does have some sort of wrestling, grappling background, as well as Aaron Blanchfield. But uh, also we got um, MMA Fortune Teller taking Fear the Miranda Maverick. And then uh, Perfect Parlay Pursuit. However, it is not Triple P certified. Alex and Tovan Anthony this time both taking Miranda Maverick. But um, we have the contrarian picker Luke, but like I said, perfect parlay. Luke said, Luke kind of looked at the odds on Tapology, took them for granted, and said, um, "Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the favorite here in Aaron Blanchfield. I think she should be the favorite. I don't know. i Aaron. She does have a little a three year old Wikipedia write up on Tapology explaining that she her nickname came from her father. That's why I think her father is also her coach." Cold-blooded because she came into the scene. Her ridge, her first amateur fight, she won first round armbar, and she won. She was on a tear, and that's when her dad gave her the nickname Cold. And she was 19 years old in her amateur career fight. And I think like a short amount of time after that, maybe like three fights after that, she came on and. Um, she went straight undefeated, walking through all the Invicta people until she got to that one loss, split decision loss to Tracy Cortez. That's her only loss on her record. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, Lukey CK took Aaron Blanchfield, as well as King of Crackdowns. 1595, I'm not gonna write all that, but uh, he's saying, King of Crackdown is saying by decision, and which decision is the route to go. Over, over two and a half is minus 325, so the books have a going decision, everybody's got a going decision. I think I'm gonna go with the, with the slight plus money here. I'm thinking Aaron Blanchfield, the New Yorker, like I said, they do have a common opponent in Brogan Walker Sanchez. And uh, Marina Maverick lost a unanimous decision to her. Whereas in Aaron, and this, this is both an in Invicta. Both these girls fought in Invicta. Marina Maverick lost to Brogan Walker Sanchez. Aaron Blanchfield's one of only two people to ever beat Brogan Walker Sanchez. And she did it recently in 2020 by unanimous decision. So I think she's gonna get a unanimous decision here against Fear the Miranda Maverick. P. Diz, I'm sorry about your girl. I know that's his favorite female fighter for P. Dizzle. I haven't seen him in a while. He must be, I don't know what, what his deal is, but uh, if you're watching P. Diz, I apologize for taking going, going against your girl. So I'm taking Blanchfield, Aaron Blanchfield. Cold-blooded. To get the decision victory over Miranda Fear the Maverick. <laughs> Finally, moving on. This banger, we have Andre Muniz, 12, 21 and four as a professional, slight favorite at minus 140, taking on Eric Anders, the former linebacker from the University of Alabama. I think he's got a national championship in his uh, on his fireplace mantle because he was uh, he was a starter, starting linebacker for. The Crimson Tide. Eric Anders, ya boy. He's a slight underdog, plus 120. Um, comes in with a record of 14 and 5. And one no contest. That one no contest, um, I think, I don't remember what. I think he won it, but then it was overturned for marijuana, I do believe. I'm not 100% not on that, but seems like that's usually the case. Man, I should go look. Oh, no, it wasn't. A legal knee against Darren Stewart. That's what it was. He had that. But then he replayed that Darren Stewart fight. 
and won and beat Darren Stroop. Matter of fact, that's his last victory was the win against Darren the Dentist Stewart by unanimous decision. The fight before that, he was beating Darren Stewart up as a huge underdog, actually. And then, stupid fight IQ, he kneed him while he was down. So he got disqualified, making that, overturning that, turning into a no contest. That's why he is 3-1-1 one, and one in his last five. Andre Muniz, on the other hand, uh, was coming off a win against Ronaldo Jacare Souza, where he broke his arm. In an arm bar. Snapped his arm, Nor. He broke his arm. I see you looking at me. In round one. He broke Jacare Souza's arm in round one. Andre Muniz is nothing to mess with. He is a, on a seven fight win streak. Last time he lost was in 2016 against uh, Azamat Mirzakhanov, who was supposed to fight last week but f uh, fell through. Mirzakhanov managed to knock him out in round one in 2016. <clears throat> Andre Muniz fights out of the Tata fight team in Montos Claros. Not the original Tata fight team, the one in Montos Claros, but just still, still it's Tata fight team. I remember when I was in Philadelphia, Tata came up here. Ta yeah, I used to live in Philadelphia before you were born. Tata Duarte is his name. He came up and gave like uh, when I was at, um, was it Balance? Before Balance, I went to uh, Dottie's. Uh, Dottie's kickboxing for a short amount of time. I went, I went there maybe maybe three, four months and I remember Tata came up and gave like a exhibition thing. I, I still have a t-shirt from it though. But I was, that's when watching that or what, that's when it, I fell in love with jujitsu and took, left the kickboxing school, Dad, Brad Daddy's kickboxing and I went over to Balance Studios and continued as a BJJ practitioner over kickboxing. But anyway, that's in the past. <coughs> um, Eric Anders fights out of Fight Ready, you know, Fight Ready with Triple C, Henry Sayoto, and uh, they, have a, they have a good facility there in, in Ari Scottsdale, Arizona with the Fight Ready crew. Eric Anders is coming in on a short notice Replacement though, replacing Drikas Duplessis. So you got to keep that in mind. And he's coming down. He's usually light heavyweight. So he's got to drop down from 205. Down. I think he last weighed in just slightly under 200. So he's probably right. I think I want to say it's like 190 something. But still, he's got to suck a little bit of weight to get down to his middleweight 185 weight class. Andre Muniz. These guys, same height, but Muniz does have a three inch reach advantage. I don't know if that's really gonna come into play. We got Eric Anders has to keep it on the ground, or keep it standing if he wants to win. That's his path to victory is through striking. He definitely has the more powerful strikes, but if Andre Muniz gets it to the ground, sorry, ya boy. Sorry for ya boy, Eric Anders. He's going to get tapped out most likely because Muniz is a beast on the ground showing that when he broke Jacare's arm in an arm bar. I think before that he had an arm bar. Like I said, he's on a seven fight win streak, dude, the dude is. Eric Anders, 3-1-1 one, and one is last. So let's see what the Cappers have to say in this interesting middleweight showdown fight between these two. Um, prime contenders. Muniz, 31. Look at, look, Nor. What? Another dried out marker, probably because it didn't have a cap on it. Garbage. We had two of them. Look up how to recover dried markers. Google it. I don't have anything to do it with. I think you have to, like, wet them and put them in the microwave or something. I don't know, something huh? stupid. I don't know, there's a way to recover, like regenerate dried markers. There's a way to do it. I read it before, I don't know what it is though. Okay, starting with the favorite, Andre Muniz. We're, we've got Sergi Pano, that's his uh, nickname by the way. Sergi Pano taking on your boy. I should have looked what that uh, is, what that means, Sergi Pano. 
the perfect parlay pursuit is split on this. Um, this yeah. is the one Dan was still in the Dan did they like I said they start in the top and work their way backwards to the they start the championship fight and go backwards to the prelims. Dan left after this pick. And also they didn't ask Tovan Anthony what his pick was for this fight. And nothing was they just moved on. Weird. I think he felt Felt kind of left out. It was kind of awkward. But anyway, um, Alex and Dan are both taking Muniz. Luke, obviously, going the other way, taking your boy Eric Anders for his uh, power and strength and striking. And uh, he does, I'm not going to lie, Eric Anders does have some get-up game, and he's been working on his wrestling, you can tell, with Fight Ready. Like, Triple C, Henry Ciuto is a gold medalist in wrestling, so he does have the, they do have that, in that outlet of training for him. Tata Fight Center, that's a, I, if, if it's the Tata I know, he's just a beautifully gifted BJJ practitioner, but, um, and it shows. That's why Muniz definitely has, if it does go to the ground, Muniz has the advantage. But striking, I think I will give the edge to Eric Anders. Um, then we got, uh, MMA Fortune Teller also taking Muniz. Then we got, uh, Layton from UFC Gambling Addicts. He's on the side with Eric Anders. He likes the strength in your boy. And we've got your boy. Who's your boy? Eves. <laughs> Eves, your boy, taking Andre Muniz. He says he should be able to get the decision victory. Um, <coughs> there is a, there's an argument for both these guys. Once again, this is, this is a pretty good card. A lot of close fights here that could go either way. You can make arguments for both sides. And finally... Um, our last pick is from King of Crackdowns, 5095, and he's on board with Andre Uniz, KFC. He's saying Muniz should also get the decision victory here over your boy Eric Anders. He doesn't see him getting the submission, but he does think he's going to get, like, uh, press him up against the cage. Eric Anders likes also to press up against the cage. Uh, that's what he did with Darren Stewart. The legal need that happened right up against the cage. All Everything he does is against... He doesn't like to keep it in the center ring. Center of the cage, I mean. And that's where I think Eric Anders would be the strongest. Because stand-up, you can't take it to the ground. But that's why the, there's a path to victory. Both these guys. But um, I'm going to go with a slight favorite. I'm taking... Uh, Andre Muniz to get it done. And I think he's only because his ground game is so much better. And the dude can he I'm not saying he can't strike. He's got a he's got a better record. He's not he doesn't have to really suck weight. This is Anders is out of his weight class. He's got to suck weight, so keep an eye on the scales come weigh-ins and face-offs because Eric Anders might show a little bit of fatigue after having to cut weight. And Muniz, I think he's got the frame, perfect build for 185. Oh, this is a very interesting fight. I don't know which way I'm going to go. I do know I'm taking Muniz, but I don't know if he's going to get it done by decision or if he has the ability to submit Eric Andrews. You know what? I will say submission. That's what my tapology pick is going to be by submission. Probably, uh, I don't know which round right now. I'm just going to say submission for the sake of the show. I'll prop that too. But uh, I imagine it'll probably be round two or three. Round one, Andrew's going to come out and uh, give it his all. Potentially gas out. He is more muscular, Eric Anders. That's why I'm saying he might. Yeah, I love it. I appreciate it. So, um, to recap. To recap, I've got um, Alex Perez with the majority of the cappers beating Matt Danger, not so dangerous, 
Schnell. But the, I don't know. Matt Schnell is dangerous, though. He's His six losses are to prime fighters, though. That's why I don't like that decision. Especially at those odds. But something... I got a feeling. I'm going to lean Alex Perez. I'm not... Aside from this parlay here, I'm not going to bet this. I think Matt Schnell, I might even hedge bet Matt Schnell. I don't know. We're gonna we'll take a look at how they looked at each other at uh, the face-offs. But right now I'm leaning Alex Perez in this. Then I got Aaron Blanchfield upsetting Miranda Maverick because uh, I don't like MMA math, but she does have a victory against a female that Miranda Maverick lost to. And I think she's just as well-rounded as Miranda Maverick, if not a little bit better. Cold-blooded. This is going to be a good female fight because they're both aggressive fighters. They're both going to take it to each other. Hold back nothing. We'll see whose cardio holds out. They're both young girls. They're Blanchfield's 22, Maverick's 24. It's going to be a good fight, but I'm going to lean with Aaron Blanchfield, cold-blooded, to beat Fear the Miranda Maverick at plus money. And finally, I'm taking Andre Muniz to get it done over your boy, Eric Anders. Um, I, I want to say submission, but it probably I should do the safe bet and say decision, but screw that. The guy broke Jacare's arm. I think he can do the same... Or maybe not the same, but uh, was it snap, nap, or tap? Those are your choices, Eric Andrews. Which one are you going to do? I'm going to go to sleep. You're going to go to sleep? That means you're going to get choked out by Andre Muniz. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there you have it. Um, gather the info, place the bets, and cash those. <laughs> Cash those tickets. I appreciate you watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, leave comments, and tell me who you think is going to win these fights. They're, I'm still on the fence with a bunch of these. As you, I'm not confident at all with these fights. Um, but I am still, I'm still making this parlay bet right now as soon as I'm done with uploading this video. I'm taking Blanchfield, Muniz, and Perez in a parlay. Should be nice plus money so uh thanks for watching give me that thumbs up fill the comments good luck on these bets and i will see you tomorrow i'll see you next time with uh some more select fights from ufc 269